and this is the night of Arafat, went yesterday and the day of Arafat has gone and Rasulullah sallallahu was traveling on his camel and he was departing and going towards Muzdalifah. And the night of Muzdalifah is a very unique night full of light and noor. The Hajji stop at Muzdalifa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put his special khas, special fadl, his special grace and mercies rain down and forth the whole, all of the people, the masses and they come there and that night the enjoyment of the night of Muzdalifa is that that night is short it is short but the day to come is very great indeed. Yawm al tomorrow, the 10th of Dhul Hijjah and this is Eid al Adha also. So this is a beautiful and unique and great night. And Noor descends. There is no lighting. There is darkness there in Muzdalifah. But from Allah Ta'ala the light is descending. How beautiful scenes on the night of Muzdalifah. Before the 10th of Dhul Jannah. Our master, your master, our master, my master, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam departed from Arafah and went towards Muzdalifah. And after reaching there, he was silent, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then, after that, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke and addressed his noble companions, the Sahaba Ikram, the respected companions. And he, you know, when you distribute the awards and you say congratulations, and in the same sort of manner, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated, that my companions, my companions, your good deeds due to your good deeds and good actions, even the bad people have been forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sinful people. And your good deeds, your pious deeds, due to that your rank and status has been elevated even more. And this was a big piece of good news that what in this night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given such a reward that everyone has been forgiven. Nobody is left without the forgiveness. Alhamdulillah, everyone has been forgiven. And there was an Arabi. When he heard this, and the Arabi, you know the Arabis, they are straightforward and down, they're straightforward and simple. And he grabbed the rein of the Prophet Wasallam's camel. And he said, Oh Prophet of Allah Wasallam." He spoke straight forward without any hesitation left and right. He said, I've heard your words great statement you've just made that the people are pious they're forgiven and due to their sadqa we are also forgiven and the sinful people have been forgiven what's going to happen to me what about me and all the companions are listening muzdalifa this is this incident then the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi listened carefully and said he said i am such a man that in my life the arabs they speak honest they don't they don't do trick or fraud or cheating they're from the village locality the the people from the city they play the games and dramas and he was straightforward a villager he said i have nobody yes and there's no sin that i've left unturned in my life i am a liar and i break the promises i commit fraud and he admitted standing there in front of everybody the sins he was speaking honestly open straightforward yeah without any hesitation what's going to happen to me he said he asked what, which hisab will I be in? What about my accounting and my balance sheet? And I'm a sinful person. I'm the worst. What's going to happen to me? And subhanAllah, maybe he was representing us. Maybe subhanAllah, he had the vision, the foresight to understand that we, today's Muslims are so bad that we don't even come into his group. We are worse than that. This is the reality. This is such a generation of darkness that we're in. What can we do? Think about it now. What shall we do? So on this stage, at this point, he spoke openly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him come forward. So the us people today, us category of people in the ummah, who are a blot on the name of the ummah, darkness, a stain. So mashallah, he represented that question for us, you can say. So all our sins, even the sins that are within us, and they are present. Maybe he didn't even have those sins. But even he said that, Oh Rasulullah Sallam, that I am sinful, I am the worst. And there will be people to come obviously, and there will be worse. And subhanAllah, I've got this sin and this sin. So what will happen to me? And so look at the answer. Because the mercies were raining down. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu heard everything. And he said, that, Go, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Your life has changed. What are you talking about? Speak from a new front. That person, that man, what a statement. Imagine Hazrat Salman Farsi. Of course, it's from a hadith. It's linked to a hadith. Rather, it is a very beautiful verse that it is linked to, connected to, and that's coming to my mind as well. And those people, mashallah, they will understand what I'm saying. Those people have passion and desire. Wa uh, Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, in this verse, that those people who have tawakkal in Allah, wa huwa asbuhu, Allah Ta'ala is enough for them. 
Allah is enough for those people, Allah is sufficient for those people. So Hazrat Salman Farsi stated that that insan, individual, who is, for example, enjoying, like you are all, mashallah, Yes, you've got everything, you've got ease and comfort. This is Aish, this is comfort. MashaAllah, we're like kings. We're not begging to anyone. We've got our own clothes and our own food and our own living. Good comfort. So those people in the days of comfort, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people in the days of ease and comfort, do the dhikr of Allah for which I have called you and sat you down. And this night is for this reason. That those people who in the days of comfort and ease, remember Allah. Then obviously the difficulties do come in life, don't they, for everybody? They come. The difficulties come, the issues come. So what happens when the difficulties come, the predicaments come, the problems come, then the angels come and they stand in the court of Allah. The angels, the malaika, they go to Allah. And the first thing, the person who is the dhakir, he has a connection with the angels. This is the first point we learn here from this. That normal people who are jokers, who run away, who take people's money and commit fraud, but the dhakir, the people who do dhikr of Allah, who are their friends? The angels. That's why it's stated, do the dhikr of Allah, my friends. Why do I tell you to do dhikr? Who's become your friends? The angels become your friends. And today if a jinn comes, he becomes a baba, the person who controls the jinn, he becomes a baba, black magic and he earns money. If you do dhikr of Allah, the angels will come to you. But we don't want to do the genuine action. We want to go towards the act of theft and fraud and deceit because the Nurani path we don't go down that road so the person who does black magic and commits fraud and dunya love he is controlling the jinn but people who are the dhakir the friends of Allah they have the angels as their friends what a beautiful line will you do dhikr? will you come back to what I'm saying? every Thursday night you've got to reach to the dhikr inshallah to the majlis because I'm telling you that he stated that when the difficult time comes upon the man, on everybody we have difficulties and issues and problems, and who will help us in the problem time? Phone your uncle, he'll say sorry. Phone your mamuji, sorry, he'll give the answer. You call your friends, they'll give the answer. Does anyone come to assistance? Is it? And? And we, if we invite everybody to a feast or food, they'll all come. When the days of problems come, when issues come, problems come, calamities come, nobody listens, nobody re- responds, nobody comes to aid. Twelve, and the person stumbling and falling, and no one's there to help in the dark days. Do the dhikr of Allah, my friends. Do the dhikr of Allah. And the days of comfort and ease and happiness. If you do dhikr like you're sitting here, it's the night of Eid. People will be outside in our country. There's mendi and this and noise and bangles and clothes and noise and people like. Mad people are wondering, even in the, everywhere, same people in this town, there's been an announcement for dhikr from 10 days, the board's been up, and this is our hal. And then we say, Allah doesn't listen to us, Allah doesn't listen to us. Imagine, direct Allah Ta'ala is inviting us. This is direct dialing up to Allah, so direct contact with Allah, the dhikr of Allah, direct dial, direct contact. The right call. And we're sitting with Aish with ease and comfort. So when we've got good days, then remember Allah. If in the week once, one day, we come for a few hours, we remember Allah, then what difference does it make if we spend a few hours? What do we get in return for that? Look, that tomorrow when a problem comes, we'll run around, oh this, my problems, my issues, I've got issues, and we start crying. So what happens? When such an event comes, then we do dhikr of Allah. And the person who doesn't do dhikr of Allah, he gets kicked around, left, right, up and down. But when a person who does dhikr of Allah, who remembers Allah, then the angels, they stand for him. We don't know, they're our friends. The friend is he who behind your back, he helps you. That's the friend. Behind your back, he'll help you. You know, the thief, the fraudster, the hypocrite, they'll come to you in front of your face and remind you of their favors. I did this for you, I'm doing this for you. But this is not friendship. That you realize your friend, he's distressed, he shouldn't even realize you go and help him. You go and put the money into his bank account. You say, where did these money come from? You didn't say anything to him. This is muhabbat and love and friendship. Okay? Do you understand? So this is the friendship with the angels. The angels, they love the dhakir. The dhakir has got problems in the world. And then they start their work of the friendship. That he's our good friend. He used to give us food. He used to feed us. He used to do dhikr and give us food. So they go direct to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They go direct to Allah ta'ala's court. Because their link is in the heavens. They are nurani creation. They stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, what's wrong? What's come? What's happened to you? Why are you here with me? What, what is the issue? They say, Allah, we have a friend who lives in Bolton, in the UK, and people don't know him. But we are his friend. And he's a straightforward good man. He drives his taxi, or he works here, sits with his children, his family. Nobody knows him. And Allah says, he's your friend? He says, yes, Allah, he's our solid friend. We can't live without him. We meet him so regularly. And we just met him, isn't it? Just now, a few days ago, it's just like, uh, we just finished dhikr, isn't it? The dhikr hasn't even finished. We feel like that. Look how great is dhikr. We just finished dhikr. A couple of hours ago, an hour ago, beautiful dhikr, one and a half ago. It was nice dhikr, wasn't it? Are you tired? 
Are you sorry, sitting fresh? Does we do dhikr again? MashaAllah. This is the beauty. This is the effect. This is a great miracle, let me tell you. Great miracle. There's such a great dhikr we did, alhamdulillah, that I felt so good and positive. A beautiful emotion overcame me. And every second, every moment, dhikr is different. At different times, dhikr has a different taste. So we did dhikr there. We've now come in. Quite a few people are here. Tell me the honest truth. That does this not feel different now where we're sitting? Different emotion, different condition. Don't I look different to you? My words are totally different. The discussion is different. This is the beauty and the effect and the miracle of Allah Ta'ala's remembrance. These are the mu'ajizat of the Quranic verses of dhikr, of salah. This is the enjoyment of deen. My friends, this is the enjoyment of deen. Otherwise, if there's a function, if you go to a wedding function, and after that there's another wedding, people get fed up, oh, I have to go again, sit down, eat. And some people don't go again, oh, I just had food, I'm full up, then we got to go again, same formalities, and then they leave from the back door. Oh, I just had a function, oh, I'm not going to another one. And here we haven't even started this, so please quickly start, start, we need to hear more, see more, feel more. Aha, is this not the case? Am I speaking honestly? Am I saying the right thing? Come on brother, tell me, oh, he doesn't want to speak today. He doesn't want to speak today. You tell me. So now, what is this? What's the difference here? The, oh, the angels say, Allah, He's our true friend. What is it? What's the masla? If He's your friend, what's the issue? But Allah, now He's got problems. He's got worries. He's distressed. He's got problems, Allah. And He stumbled ac- across an issue. And He can't solve His problem in the world. And he's, the tax people have called hold of Him. He made a mistake. He didn't pay His dues on time. Or He's fallen into a trap or deception. He was innocent. What should we do? What will happen? So Allah is the Khalik, the Malik, the, the Qadir. What is it that Allah Ta'ala doesn't know? Allah Ta'ala doesn't need to sign. Allah says, Kun and everything changes. The whole universe flips upside down. And the man in the world doesn't even know the angels are helping. But he's not going anywhere. And he's sitting there saying, Asmanallahu wa ni'mal wakil. وَمَن يَتَوَقَّلَ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ This is for the Dhaqirin, this verse of the Qur'an. وَمَن Allah Ta'ala says that those people who have tawakkal, that's why I give the reference of this verse. What verse? That those people who trust Allah, who have tawakkal, Allah, Allah says, I become this. The Dhaqir has trust in nobody else. That the Zakir who names Allah, who says the name of Allah, and the person who says hundred thousand times, Allah, Allah, seventy, eighty thousand times, that is their breakfast, the name of Allah. That they're like, no, this, oh, I do twelve this be, ten this be, well, can you reduce it? Do I have to drive my taxi, it's too hard for me. That's not the wali of Allah. Allah, but hundred thousand repetitions. As a Hakim al Ummat, Rahmatullah alayhi, he had a murid, Mawzub Rahmatullah alayhi. And he was the collector, the tax collector, the money collector. It was a big post at that time. Don't know what we'll call it now. And it was a big post. At that time I'm speaking, when the British Empire was there present in India. He was a big officer, a government officer, big responsibility, educated. What did he do? His, his mamulat that he used to do so many thousands of times over, and he used to go into his sheikh and say, I'm not feeling the enjoyment yet. I'm not feeling the joy yet. So those people who create a connection with Allah, with every heartbeat, Allah Ta'ala's name is mentioned. When they sit down with the tasbih, they don't know how many time, how much time has gone spent. They don't look at the time. And the fast is progressing, they're doing dhikr, the time is passing, and if tari time comes and it passes. Subhanallah. So when this link is created, then Alhamdulillah, what happens? Allahu Akbar. Then they don't go towards anybody else. Ah, فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Allah Ta'ala says, I am with you. وَمَنْ يَتَوَقَّلَ لَا اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Allah Ta'ala says, subhanahu wa ta'ala. They create a link with their Lord. Everything they ask from Allah. That Allah, He says, Allah, I'm in dhikr. He doesn't need to ask Allah. He's got problems, worries, difficulties. He says, no. If someone asks him, you got problems? He says, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm okay. We cry. Oh, after salah, what am I going to do? And you grab hold of somebody who's uh, on the deen. Is there someone who can help me? I've got these problems. I'm stuck. I'm trapped. How shall I get out of this? How do you know that the person who prays salah is the dhakir? He says, Allah, Allah. He's not worried. He doesn't ask for help from the people of the dunya. They say, Allah, he's got problems. Allah says, that man who sits they're doing dhikr and Allah says to the angels that what do you know I know more than you about him subhanallah Allah Ta'ala says I know more than you about this man what do you know what, what intercession are you bringing to me what um, influence are you trying to me to make Allah Ta'ala says I've fulfilled all his needs Allahu Akbar 